While the law needs to keep pace with changing means and methods of warfare, there is naturally a worry that well-established humanitarian standards may be eroded because the law doesn't neatly fit with a new capability that departs from traditional conceptions of using force, such as cyber warfare. However, as paradoxical as it may sound, such new methods and means of warfare can actually promote a new recognition of greater humanitarian obligation. Take, for example, the rules contained within Article 57 of Additional Protocol 1. This provision, which is also reflected as a rule of customary international law, requires that states who are undertaking an attack make sure that they do all that is feasible to reduce civilian loss, even below what a proportionality analysis would otherwise allow for in respect of expected incidental civilian casualties. To this end, the rise of cyber as a weapon system may require a state to use such means to attack and render inoperative a military objective in a manner that results in no civilian losses whatsoever. Thus, if I have a bomb and I have a cyber capability to render inoperative a military objective, say for example an air defence system, then as a matter of law I may be required to use the cyber means. Certainly Professor Schmidt thinks this is the case, although his views are heavily caveated by the requirement of feasibility. Let's listen to what he has to say. You're sitting in a mission planning cell, a targeting cell. You are trying to achieve, targeting today isn't about destroying things, it's about achieving effects on the enemy. You're trying to achieve a particular effect, and I can achieve that effect by dropping a bomb on it, by destroying the target. But in today's environment, I may be able to achieve the effect by simply shutting it down for a short period. And so under Article 57 and under customary law, if you can do so without sacrificing any military advantage, then I believe as a matter of law, you're obligated to engage in the cyber measure. Now, I, I, I have to emphasize again that this is subject to the military, military feasibility of doing that. Not every case is it militarily feasible. Uh, despite uh, what you often hear in the press, our cyber resources are not unlimited. And if we're in a major conflict, uh, various commanders will compete for cyber resources. Uh, moreover, cyber has a, a real problem, and it's a problem that I uh, that the techies, the technical experts are always telling me about, once you fire a cyber weapon, that may be the last time you get to use that weapon because you're exploiting a vulnerability and the use of the cyber weapon reveals your capability such that the vulnerability is plugged. So I may not use the cyber weapon, not because I need to use it elsewhere, but I don't know what's going to happen in the future and I may need to reserve it for situations where it may be more valuable in avoiding civilian harm.